Night has fallen, and the moon is a glowing golden orb in the black sky. See how it shines on the dark back roads of America, and on one road in particular. Come with us, and we'll take a walk down the moonlit road, for the night is waiting, and the moon is full. The Moonlit Road presents Episode 5, I Don't Feel Dead Yet, written by Craig Dominey and Veronica Bird, and told by Veronica Bird. Well, it happened one morning in the deep, dark swamps of Louisiana that Sister Jones woke with a start. She looked at her husband, who was sleeping soundly beside her. She was a bit uneasy, though, for she had dreamed of a beautiful wedding. And her mama had always taught her that to dream of marriage was a sure sign of death. Now, Sister Jones lay there and wondered exactly who was going to be the one to pass from this earthly life to the next, she or her husband, Cephas. Well, about a week later, she got her answer. Her husband, who had been suffering with the consumption, took a turn for the worst and slipped from this life into the spirit world. Now the widow Jones was sad to see her husband go, but she should have seen it coming, for she had been warned by the dream. Sister Jones immediately covered all the mirrors in the house soon after her husband died, because it's a well-known fact that if you don't, the image of the dead will remain in those mirrors. Now, Sister Jones loved her husband, don't get me wrong, but she didn't want his image hanging around in those mirrors, no, sir. Well, the next day, as tradition would have it, Sister Jones buried her husband, and afterwards she and the mourners came back to the house and were just sitting around talking about how they were going to miss Paul Cephas, as stubborn though he was. When all of a sudden, the front door swung open and a cold breeze filled the entire room, And in walked Cephas. He walked up to the mourners and said, Y'all talking about me? He then pulled up his favorite rocking chair and sat down right between his widow and the lead mourner and said, What's all this about? Y'all act like somebody's dead. Who's dead? Well, needless to say, by this time, all the mourners had jumped up and run clean out of the house. But the widow, who was also very frightened, managed to blurt out, Now, Cephas, you know you're dead. So why are you sitting here in the living room rather than over in the graveyard? Dead, said Cephas. How come you say I'm dead? I sure don't feel dead. And the widow, quite confused by now, she said, You may not feel dead, Cephas, but you sure look dead, dead as can be. You better go on back to the graveyard where you belong. Now, even though Cephas was dead, he was still very, very stubborn. He said, no, I ain't going back to any graveyard until I feel dead. He then moved closer to the fire and tried to warm his cold hands and feet all the while, giving the room an icy chill. And from sunup to sundown, day after day, that's all he did. Sit by the fire, rocking back and forth, trying to warm his cold hands and feet. Well, after a few weeks, the brother Steve was just sitting around. I'm sure you can imagine it started to present quite a problem. Now, even though Sebus didn't feel dead, he sure did look dead. For you see, his skin had turned a funny gray color, and it looked real dusty. And every time he'd move, his joints creaked and cracked. And as days wore on, he would creak and crack more and more. Now, the widow Jones, who hadn't received any company since her husband's untimely return, began to wonder just how long this corpse would last. But this was just part of the problem. For you see, the insurance association refused to pay on Sebus's life insurance policy since Sebus declared he was not dead. And the undertaker threatened to take back the coffin since Sequence was not going to lie in it. Now, Widow Jones needed that insurance money awfully bad. 
And what's more, she was getting really tired of her dead husband just sitting around the house, rocking and creaking and cracking. She tried to convince he was time and again to go back to the grave. But each time he'd protest, leave me alone, woman. I'm not going back to no burying ground till I'm dead. And I don't feel dead yet. Now, Widow Jones knew that something had to be done. Well, Dad Seabus had been sitting around the house for about a month when one night the best fiddler in town built up enough nerve to go by and visit the Widow Jones. After all, she hadn't had any company since Seabus came back. Well, the fiddler came in and sat on one side of the fire, and Seabus in his favorite rocking chair was on the other, cracking and creaking and still trying to warm his cold hands and feet. Well, the two men exchanged glances, and each made small talk, as small as a human and a corpse can make. But after a few minutes of this, it was very obvious that the two men were rather uncomfortable. But by and by, Sebus blurted out, All this sitting around is boring. Let's the three of us do something fun. How about some music, Brother Fiddler? Let's dance and limber up our joints. Though still trying to get used to the fact that he was sitting and talking with a corpse, the fiddler got out his fiddle and he started to play. When Cephas heard that music, he jumped up, shook himself about, and he started buck dancing right down there in the middle of the floor. And that's more like it, he hollered, and he skipped and he pranced about, his old rotten bones creaking and a cracking even louder than before. For a dead man, he sure could dance. In fact, he danced so hard that a piece of his arm flew loose and fell on the floor. Not believing his eyes, the fiddler stopped playing and said, Good golly, look at that. The widow grinned at the sight, an idea coming to her head. Play faster, she said, play faster. The fiddler played faster, and Cephas danced faster. He danced so fast, as a matter of fact, that pieces of his bone went flying every which way. And now, by this time, the poor fiddler, who was so scared he didn't know what to do, he said, well, 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 What should I do now? He pleaded with the widow. The widow kept hollering, faster, faster, play faster, keep playing faster. The fiddler, too frightened to do other than what he was told, played faster. Cephas danced faster, and the fiddler played faster still. Well, Cephas danced faster and faster. He danced so fast, his bones dropping all the time, until all at once, Cephas crumbled to the floor in a big heap of bones. Well, there lay the bones of Cephas, still as they could be, except for his big old bald head. Why, it kept on dancing all by itself, just to grinning up at the fiddler, while the head was bouncing all over the floor, just a dancing and a grinning. The widow hollered, Play faster, fiddler! Play faster! Well, the fiddler wasn't hearing none of that. He said, I- I'm sorry, Widow Jones, but I, I got to run out and get me some, uh, get me some rosin for my bow. Yeah, that's it. I'll be right back. Well, I'll have you to know, the fiddler ran out of that front door in a flash, and he hasn't been seen since. But when the fiddling stopped, Sebus's bald head grinned up at his wife and said, What happened to the music, wife? I'm ready to dance some more. The widow simply looked at her husband's head and said, The music has stopped, Sebus, and so have you. You have danced yourself into a big heap of bones, and now it's time for you to go back to the graveyard. Well, see, was his big old eyes looked around, and he noticed that he didn't have a body. So he <sighs> sighed a big sigh and said, Okay, wife, I guess I do feel dead now. Go on and take me back to the graveyard. So the widow gathered up all the bones and took them back to the graveyard. But she was careful to lay those bones all crisscross ways so Cephas could never jump up and start dancing in case he heard some of that nice fiddling music. After that, Cephas didn't get up out of that grave no more. And it's sad to say, the poor widow Jones remained a widow for the rest of her life. Most folks think it was that dancing head that kept all the men away. Mm Mm-hmm. That concludes this tale from The Moonlit Road. Be sure to visit our website at themoonlitroad.com to find out more about our stories and let us know how we're doing. The Moonlit Road is produced and directed by Craig Dominey, 
recorded and soundscaped by Henry Howard in beautiful Stone Mountain, Georgia. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.